Zay, we're going to move on to this boxing topic real quickly here, and then we're going to come back for our take for 99. You know, I want to talk about this, right, because this is a very big topic with Canelo Alvarez, right, because um, he's going to be fighting Edgar Belenga. And uh, basically the question that we have right now is should Canelo Alvarez's business decisions overshadow his legacy? And Zay, you can start us off. You know, and I think uh, this is a, a discussion that I think we need to have. We need to have more often um, because when we talk about Floyd Mayweather, we talk about he, he only is play, fighting for the check and that all of his career is based upon him making the most money as a boxer. Um, and I think we need to discuss that in the same magnitude of Canelo Alvarez. Right. Yes, he's going up in weight and fighting these different divisions and taking belt to left and right, but who is he really fighting, right? He's running away from the competition that is at his doorstep to fight different guys in different weight classes to take their belts and kind of push them aside. And I think his um, business decisions should overshadow his legacy, the same way that the Mayweather's um, business decisions overshadow his legacy. Um, people to this day, when they talk about Floyd Mayweather, they talk about him ducking guys, not based on him going 50-0, not that he was a dynamic fighter and a great defensive boxer. It was just that he was ducking guys left and right to get the highest paid, um, get, to get them paid the most out of every fight, hit, not get hit, take on guys too early in their careers, take on guys way too late in their careers. It's it's so much different things that they talk about when it comes to Floyd Mayweather. We have to look at Canelo in the same light. And I think when Floyd fought Canelo, that's what Canelo took from that Floyd Mayweather fight. It wasn't anything skill-wise, anything boxing-wise. It was just like, oh, this guy, un he, this guy took some something in terms of uh, creating the most profitable margins in, in this fight, and I, I need to take that moving forward from my career. And I think that's exactly what Canelo did. Once he fought Triple G, everything from there on, just money, 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 money. Everything is money-induced. And is that an issue with Canelo Alvarez, or is that an issue with boxing? That's a discussion for another day, but right now I say we should uh, over we should look at um, Canelo Alvarez's business decisions and and say this is what you are putting your legacy is diminishing because of it. Yeah, I think for me, we definitely have to put a little asterisk on Canelo's legacy. Um, I think I want to start off here when you talk about Floyd Mayweather. You know, he is by far the most impactful athlete in boxing history you can argue of this generation for sure but you can argue of all time and i think the way how he made boxing profitable you know with all the money he poured into the to the sport and generated through pay-per-view buys and stuff like that has paved the way for canelo alvarez and a tank davis to you know make the type of money down even the middle guys make money as well but those guys are obviously the faces of boxing right now canelo and tank right but i think in acknowledging the good that Mayweather has done for the sport, we need to acknowledge the conundrum, the bad, you know, with the overflowing, the cash flow of money, you know, being in the sport, you have guys like Canelo who is in tune with just making the paycheck, right? And not fighting the guys that we want to see him fight. You know, at least with Mayweather, the one guy that we want to see him fight especially in the middle of his career towards the end, was Manny Pacquiao. We got that fight. So whatever he did after Manny Pacquiao was whatever, you know. Uh, we didn't really care too much. Even though he was criticized for some of the guys that he decided to fight, he fought Manny Pacquiao. He gave us the one fight that we wanted to see. Now, when you talk about Canelo, the one fight that we want to see right now is David Benavidez, and he's not giving us that fight. So when he fights a Edgar Belenga to try to, you know, drive up his cash flow and run up a bag, of course, guys like myself is going to feel type of way about that, you know? And I think for me, when you talk about this Edgar Belenga fight coming up, I mean, come on. Anybody who watches boxing knows that this is a cash grab on both sides, okay? You got Edgar Belenga talking about silk arm sheets and, and, and mansions and stuff like that, interviews when asked about this fight. This guy know he don't got no shot to win this fight. He has no boxing skill to be in the ring and affect Canelo in ways that Bivor did, in ways that Caleb Plant did prior to Caleb Plant getting stopped, right? He doesn't offer anything from that boxing mechanical perspective, right? Technician perspective. When you talk about power, yeah, he has a he has some pop, obviously, was knocking guys out in the beginning, and then he upped the competition, came and get a knockout to save his life, 
okay? And, and, and listen, I like Edgar Belenga, but I'm just giving you the real deal, okay? I saw Edgar Belenga in passing. I gave him that, and I kept it moving, okay? Cool dude. But at the same time, I'm not trying to be rude. I got to give you the truth. He's not going to beat Canelo. And even when he throws these power punches, Canelo is one of the best counter punches in boxing, and he can set the traps and literally catch, you know, Edgar Belenga with something that he ain't see coming. Okay, or you try to get hyper aggressive like a Munguia, and then you're gonna get stopped. Okay, I don't see a world in which Edgar Belenga sees this fight or wins this fight, right? And I don't think any boxing fan sees a world where Edgar Belenga will win this fight. This is a cash grab, and this is a business model here. So I think when you talk about legacy, yes, we know Canelo has done a lot for the sport of boxing, accomplished a lot, you know, in the sport of boxing, but at the end of the day, that one name. Okay, like how we did with Mayweather. We want to see you fight Pacquiao. The one name that we want to see him fight right now is David Benavidez, and we are not getting that. And I think that's why we have guys like Turkey that don't want to do business with Canelo because he knows that Canelo is calling the shots of his own career, and he's stuck up, right? So you got a guy that he gets what he wants in Turkey because he has the funds, and he's able to dish it out. He say, I want you to fight this guy, and then that's going to happen. Right. Well, that's not going to happen with Canelo because Canelo is the is the, you know, driving force in boxing, the box office guy. OK, so he does what he wants with his career. So obviously these two guys are not going to intertwine and connect because he's stuck up and Turkey's a player. He got money, too. So I think Turkey, with his comments that came out today, Zay, you posted that. If you want to briefly touch on that, I'm going to give you the mic. But I think with his comments there, you know, it shows that Canelo right now is not focused on legacy anymore. He thinks he cemented his legacy. I beg to differ. I think fighting David Benavides will cement his legacy. But here we are. He's doing a Mayweather thing. And this fight right here, and I'm closing here, this fight with Edgar Belenga and Canelo is the equivalent of Mayweather Andre Brodo in his last fight professionally. That's the equivalence here. He's literally doing what Mayweather is doing. But the mic is yours. According to Turkey Al uh he says, I heard what Canelo said that he respects, but doesn't like the way we do business. As for him respecting me, it doesn't matter to me if he does or not. As for the way I do business, I know why he doesn't like it because I only target big fights at fair prices. So, of course, anyone who likes easy fights won't like that. Um, And I know how he feels after losing to Bivol. So he's been looking for easier fights ever since. Also, I'm not the one who's afraid of fighting Benavidez or Crawford. Therefore, I knew he was wasting our time and making excuses with big amounts of money that can't be paid. So I'm continuing my way to make big fights that serve the boxing world. And he's on his way to making easy show only fights. That says enough as is. The bank is here. The guy who is trying to facilitate the fights that fans want to see with the all the money that these boxers are asking for, then he's showing what these boxers are really truly looking at. They're looking at trying to look the best. And I blame that on whoever boxer started it back in the day. We could blame yeah, Mayweather, but it was definitely <laughs> boxers before Mayweather doing this where they're fighting these guys and building themselves up and shying away from the big fights. Lil, you said it before a couple shows ago. We cannot sit here and um, say, yeah, well, these young guys, they we want to see the big fights, but it's too early to fight them, right? You say this all the time. When is the perfect time for these mega fights to happen, right? When is that time? And I guess with this guy, Turkey, comes in here in the world of boxing, puts on a, a, a card and as such, we just seen a bunch of guys fight against each other that fans wanted to see. And he's saying, I'm willing to make more cards like this if these guys want to fight. And he's showing right now that Canelo clearly doesn't want to fight. He is just showboating. He is just screaming to the masses, crying wolf, saying the money isn't there. Meanwhile, it's his heart that isn't in the game, the game of boxing anymore. He's no longer trying to prove he's the best. He's just trying to make the most money and get out of there. Like you stated, Andre Berto versus Mayweather. This is his version of that. I think um, Canelo got exposed in this um, encounter and conversation, um, on at least on Twitter. And I think he has to rather, A, show that he's not really, not afraid of fighting anybody and, and go and fight Benavidez or Crawford or just say, you know what, I got enough money, I'm out. Because this might be an, 
uh, precursor of what's to come down the line in terms of Canelo. This is my last point and my last lap, and then I'm done. I want to respond to Kenny here because um, a lot of people is going to go with that. You know, Canelo's legacy is set in stone. I think it's a little bit more tainted than what is being led on by my guy Kenny and other people that I talked to about Canelo. You know, the fact that he tested positive, I think it was contamination meat or uh, something like that in the second, leading up to the second Triple G fight, right? That's number one. The fact that he went on this European tour when he fight guys, when he fought guys like Billy Joe Saunders, Colin Smith, and all those guys that we really didn't want to see. We want to see him fight Andre. We want to see him fight, you know, Charlo, big Charlo when Charlo was fighting. We want to see him fight other guys. He he went and fought other guys, right? Um, the weight stipulations, uh, rehydrations in the Danny Jacobs fight, right? You you put that in consideration. You talk about post Bevor when he did fight a guy like Bevor that posed the threat, but I think that was cherry picking gone wrong. He's dialed it back, and now a fight that we want to see is not being had. It's not only about us wanting to see David Benavidez and Canelo. It's not about that, folks. Yes, it's, it's about that, but it's not. It's about passing the torch. That's your duty to the sport of boxing. When Mayweather fought you, he was passing the torch to you, even though he won the fight. It allowed you to become who you became. It's about literally the, the sport that made you a living, that allowed you to have this lifestyle where you can act stuck up and broke up like how you do right now, okay? You got to pour it back into the sport. You got to invest back into the sport. And that's by passing the torch. That has always been a thing in boxing with the best fighter at the time and, and another young bull coming up and, and you pass the torch by fighting that guy, okay? That's what's being missed here. The point that I'm making, David Benavides is the young hungry lion. And he should have an opportunity to take the torch from Canelo, whether he wins or loses. I have reason to believe he will win. But whether he loses or not, it's his torch to become the biggest star when Canelo is done. So that's my point. Edgar Belenga, okay, you from New York. Like I said, we met in passing before. But I hope you enjoy your 15 minutes of fame, bro. With all due respect. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right. Slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question. Something you may want to answer. Something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.